What is going on with inflation? We recently got the report that shows the July numbers for inflation, and you've probably seen some conflicting reports about it. There have been headlines showing, hey, we haven't had any inflation during this month of July, while you're probably seeing others like this one saying that food prices are pricing Americans out of being able to afford food. So which is it? Do we have record high inflation or did they magically make it disappear? And what can you do about it to prepare? Ready? Let's dive in. First things first, a word from today's sponsor, I Trust Capital. Now, most people today are aware of how well gold has performed relative to pretty much every single asset class out there. We've seen an absolute crash take place in tech stocks, in the broad stock market, in cryptocurrencies. We are seeing blood in the streets everywhere, but gold has been keeping up. Gold has been increasing its purchasing power relative to these other assets, and many people want to buy it, but the problem is most most people have most of their wealth tied up in their 401k, in their retirement account, maybe even with their current employer. So the question is, how do we invest in gold with our money if we can't do it where our money's currently at? And that's where iTrust Capital comes in. Because unlike your workplace employer plan, like your 401k, you're not just gonna have a selection of a couple dozen mutual funds that are only invested in stocks and bonds. And unlike your IRA with a regular stock broker, with iTrust Capital, you're not just gonna have access to the regular stocks, the ETFs, GLD, SLV, things like that. With iTrust Capital, you can invest in physical gold, physical silver, that's all held underneath the banner of the IRA so that you don't have to worry about any tax consequences. You can do traditional IRAs, you can do Roth IRAs, you can make new contributions, or you can even transfer money from your existing retirement account over to iTrust Capital and use that to invest in physical gold, physical silver. Now, they also have other alternative assets available like Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. And if you use my link in the description below, you will get $100 worth of Bitcoin as a signup bonus just for opening an account. You can use that to keep it in Bitcoin, buy other cryptocurrencies or sell it, and uh, buy physical gold, physical silver again in your IRA. With iTrust Capital, sign up with my link in the description today. All right, let's take a look at what the headline inflation number was for the month of July. This chart comes from the US Bureau of Labor Statistics, and we can see that the inflation number for the month of July was eight and a half percent. That means that all of these things that they measure for inflation, measured together with the way that they weight them, came out with an annual increase in prices of eight and a half percent. This is a year over year number, meaning that of all those things, prices were eight and a half percent in this July, higher than they were last July. What's important to know, and what many people are showing though, is that that is a decrease in the inflation rate from June. So June 2021 to prices in June 2022 experienced a 9.1% increase, while in July, they only experienced a year-over-year 8.5% -year increase. Now, the inflation rate went down, but that doesn't mean prices went down. That means we have disinflation. That means the pace at which prices are increasing is slowing down. Let's look at this chart for a little bit more clarity here. This chart is just the raw numbers of what prices are doing. So we can see here, this line generally moves up with random little dips here and there. And recently the absolute price level has been moving up, but, the pace at which it's been moving up is now starting to slow down. So this is like if you're driving in your car, you're at a stoplight, you step on the gas, you're gonna go from 10 miles per hour to 20 miles per hour, then 30, then 40, then 50, then 60. All that time you're accelerating. If you stop accelerating and now you're just going 60 miles per hour, that doesn't mean you're moving backwards, and it doesn't mean you're standing still, it just means that the place 
place at which you are currently is going to be moving forward at 60 miles every single hour. So the pace at which prices moved up rose eight and a half percent from last year to this year. That still means prices are going up just at a slower rate than they were the before. So if you're in your car and you go from 60 miles per hour down to 50 miles per hour, you're slowing down, but you're still moving forward. That's what disinflation is. Now, here's the next thing that a lot of people, especially the current administration is pointing to. Let's zoom in. We can see it flatlined here. So this, remember what this chart that we're looking at is the total price level here. This is not the rate of inflation. This is just the total price level of the CPI. We can see it flatlined here. That means on average, all of the things that they measure the prices of and the way that they weight those prices, they did not increase on average from June to July. That means they stayed the same. Here's another chart just so you can see what we're looking at here. This measures the month over month inflation rate. April prices moved up from the prior month at 0.3%, in May at 1%, in June at 1.3%, which was a record. And, and then in July, this last month, prices stayed the same, so there was no increase. When we zoom out here to 25 years on this chart, we can see that the current month over month inflation that we've been experiencing for the past few months has been extremely elevated relative to the last few decades. And that is also an extremely quick drop from those record high levels down to zero, which begs the question, how in the world did that happen? Because most people are still feeling the pain of higher prices. So what in the world is going on? Did prices really just stop increasing? Well, again, like I said, this is an average number, so let's break it down per part. Here we're looking at the inflation rate again, and this is year over year. And so we see June went from 9.1 to July of 8.5, but let's break it apart. Let's look at food at home. Wow, that was a massive spike in July. Let's look at energy. Wow, it is still extremely high, but keep in mind, it dropped from 41% in June down to 32% in July. And so throughout the whole month of July, every time you went to the grocery store, you were paying more for that food than you were paying in June. You just started paying a little bit less for gas. And so the way they weight the measurement of inflation, that means that on average, there is no change in the basket from June to July. And the price increase in food was the biggest on record since 19. 1979. They climbed 10.9% year over year and 1.14% month over month. And that's the fastest food prices have risen since April of 2020. That's significant because in April of 2020, many people were eating at home because of lockdowns. And so there was a big spike in demand for food at home because a lot of the people who used to get all that food from restaurants and eating out could no longer do so. So they were forced to eat at home, that spike in demand caused a massive increase in prices for food at home during April of 2020. But we're experiencing a larger increase in food prices right now, indicating a trend reversal. There's no lockdowns going on right now. This is not being imposed on people. This is a trend change signaling economic instability and financial stress for households because it's more expensive to go out to eat than it is to cook at home. Home. And so the trend of moving away from that is causing a spike in demand to eat food at home, which is pushing prices up. That's not a sign of economic health. That's actually a sign of economic instability and fragility. And here, let's take a look at some of the categories in terms of food and how much increase we've seen in their prices. We can see that cereal, frozen fruits and vegetables, soups and baby foods just recorded their largest price increase ever on record. Instant coffee is the biggest increase since 1995. And then we've got dairy and eggs coming in at a record since 04 and 07 respectively. 
As a side note here, if you're still eating cereal, stop eating cereal. You're paying a lot for a lot of garbage. It's full of actual poison and it is used on crops like a drying agent to kill them quicker for things like oats so that they can be harvested sooner than if the plant were to die naturally. This has led the CDC to find this toxic poison in 87% of the children who were tested. So stay away from cereal because it's crushing your budget and it's poisoning your kids. But back to prices, there's a lot of speculation about what this new inflation report with 0% month over month and 8.7% year over year will do to the Federal Reserve's resolve to continue to tighten. Now, personally, I don't think this tiny little drop and year over year inflation is going to do much to stop them from raising rates. If we take a look at the federal funds rate, we can see that they have started raising rates and they are not yet where they were in 2019 when they got to this place where they had to stop raising rates. However, the rate at which they've been raising rates is extremely quick. You can see the steepness of this line is a lot steeper than this line. And so what I would expect to start to see here is something I've been calling dis tightening. So instead of raising again by 75 basis points, next time they raise by 50 basis points or go down back to 25 basis point hikes and they lower the rate at which they are increasing interest rates, even though they are still tightening. I would expect them to do something like this as they see the month over month inflation numbers start to stabilize because eventually year over year catches up with month over month. And here's the kicker, the inflation is going to stop because the money supply growth stopped. And when the inflation stops, we know that what comes next is deflation. So as much as people don't like inflation, they really won't like what comes next. As always, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.